Hey, welcome to another physics video. Uh, the last video we talked about momentum and its relation to force. In this video, I just want to build upon that idea and introduce the concept of inertia, as well as uh, offering a little bit more intuition on mass in general. So first I want to say forces cause changes in motion, changes in motion. Force is not mass times acceleration because that's not a force. The net force, the force, is actually the sum of all the different forces acting on an object. And when you add all them together, that value is equivalent to ma. And the best way I can think of explaining it is almost like ma is how we trace or how we plot back the net force. For the net force, when you add all of them together, that will jurisdict how that mass moves. And by, de by knowing the mass of the object and calculating its acceleration, you can determine that net force. But it's very, very important to know that MA is not force. All right, so now I want to introduce the uh, idea of inertia. Inertia is an object's natural resistance to a change in motion. How it wants to resist that, that change. I mean, an object, if it's moving, wants to continue moving. It doesn't want to change its motion. Uh, it's resistant to a change in motion. Some objects are harder to, uh, their uh, motion is harder to change, uh, usually because they're more massive. But in order to kind of get almost like a mathematical sense of inertia, let's solve Newton's, uh, the equation from Newton's second law for constant mass, which is F net is equal to mass times acceleration. I'm just going to call this F uh, instead of F net right now. But remember, it truly is F net. But let's go ahead and solve for acceleration. So the acceleration is equal to the force over the mass. So the force that's applied to the mass determines acceleration. So inertia is an object's natural resistance to a change in motion. Acceleration describes that change in motion. So let's, let's think about the idea of inertia, an object's natural resistance to a change in motion. Let's say we have a given force, one newton. Okay, so we're going to compare here. We have a given force, one newton for one mass, and a given, or a given force, one newton for a second mass. Now, the given force is less effective in changing the motion of a more massive object. As you can see here, if I have a 100 kilogram object versus a 1 kilogram object, here, I'm going to accelerate at one meter per second squared, whereas with the more massive object, I'm going to accelerate at 0 0.01 meters per second squared. So as you can see here, the object here with more mass has more inertia. It's more resistant to its change in motion. This one was much happier to change its motion than, uh, than the more massive object. So M, mass, is a measure of an object's inertia and determines the object's response to a force because it determines the acceleration and acceleration is motion. It, it, it's a description of motion, a changing motion. All right, so let's suppose we're trying to figure out how to relate one object's mass to another object's mass. So the definition of a newton, one newton, it's the amount of force required to accelerate a one kilogram object at an acceleration of one meter per second squared. That is the definition of a newton. So let's, let's say we're here on Earth back in the day before any of this was thought of, and we find this, this brick 
doesn't weather easily. Uh, it has a really consistent amount of matter, in other words. And let's let's just say we we think this is a good good object to use as our our definition of one kilogram. This is what we're going to call a kilogram. We're going to relate all other masses in the entire world to this object. And let's say that we uh, we play with our little force machine. And it could be a spring or something. Uh, we play with it and tinker with it, and we find the amount of force we need in order to accelerate it at an acceleration of one meter per second squared. So we're moving it around and we finally get it to accelerate at one meter per second squared. And then we're going to call that one newton. Now if we're using a spring we'd pull back to the same distance we pulled before and now the great thing about this is we can use this to determine unknown masses. All you need is a known mass and a given force. So let's look at that. Let's say we have where one is going to be known, two will be unknown. Because otherwise it'll get quite uh, messy. And let's say we figured out how far we need to pull our spring back or whatever to, uh, to acquire this one newton force that we define to be uh, the amount of force required to accelerate a one kilogram object, which we also defined at one meter per second squared, which we also defined. Um, so let's take a look. If the force of the first object, if we apply the same amount of force to the second object, then isn't the mass of the uh, first object, acceleration of the first object, equal to the mass and acceleration, the product of the mass and acceleration of the second object? And if I divide both sides uh, by uh, m1 and a2, doesn't really matter, but what I end up getting is the unknown mass, or the uh, known mass, the, oh, the unknown mass over the known mass is equal to the known acceleration over the unknown acceleration. All right, so how do we use that to determine other masses? Well, we are applying this one newton force uh, which we defined we're applying it to both objects the mass of the first object we're using is one kilogram and it accelerates at one meter per second squared and what we want to know is this mass of the second object so we put this second object in our little contraption uh, and it generates the one newton force and we find that it accelerates at five meters per second squared. We measured that. So now we could solve for the mass of that object. These units all cancel. One-fifth times one. The mass of the second object in this case would be one-fifth of a kilogram. In order to... Alright, thanks for watching. I hope the video was helpful for everyone. I'll have more coming out here soon in the future, and we'll uh, delve a little bit deeper into force. We'll actually start talking more about force here in the next few videos. Um, be patient with this idea of force, and really try to understand where all these ideas came from, and how they all relate to each other, and how they're all simple. Uh, you can easily get lost and the numerous definitions and symbols and equations and it's important to try to find a simple way of viewing your topic so i'll have more videos coming out soon where we'll attempt to do just that thanks for watching